Whoa there, Space Cowboy. Brokeback Bebop is a podcast with explicit content intended only for mature bounty hunters. Listener discretion is advised. Listen to all 40 steamy sessions of the show right now by supporting Brokeback Bebop at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast. I think it's time to blow this thing, get everybody in the stuff together. Okay. Look ahead, Steven, in the Astros. It's, it's That's not a, how it starts. It's an asteroid. Oh, no. I was just starting off a thing. You're right. Huh. Usually I have to tell you that. Good job. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. It's your turn this time. Three, two, one. Let's jam. Ugh. <laughs> jam. Ugh. <laughs> I like that. You had some Thanks. stank on it. Yeah, I had to get some stuff out. Let's jam. Captain Spock, look off into the Astros. It's... It's a global gust. Take a global gust. Take evasive maneuvers at once. But our sh- captain, our shields aren't back up at full capacity yet. I don't care. We have to get this Martian baby back yeah. to its mother. Why are you both of us now? <laughs> well, technically, you ha- you were not Captain Spock because you were talking to Spock. Oh well, I thought you were just misappropriated. Well, we're being Cowboy Bebop characters. I'm the famous Spike Spocktacle from... <laughs> uh, welcome to this bullshit, everybody. Welcome to Brokeback Bebop, the uh, most serious, painstakingly detailed Cowboy Bebop rewatch podcast the, the Heavily net scripted. has ever known. Heavily <laughs> scripted, yeah. This stuff is too good. We couldn't just make this shit up on the fly. Yeah. We plan out everything. Every single second. Uh-oh! Knock at the door! Ow, ow, ow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> How you doing, man? Another week of this thing. How you doing? Excited I'm to good. talk I'm good. I'm about... happy to be here. Yeah. I'm excited to talk about one of my favorite episodes of the show. I feel like I say wow. that every week, but I you really do. mean it this time. This is an episode I always go back to. Cool. It also, so funny enough, the episode is titled Waltz for Venus. Uh-huh. There is a song... A waltz. On the Cowie Bebop album called Venus Waltz. It's not in this episode, huh? but uh, it's named for it. And it is beautiful, and I use it all the time for work. It's gorgeous. I'll have to listen to that. Maybe I'll mm-hmm. pop that bad boy at you the end of the You absolutely should. It's going to be a nice ending. Cool. I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Well, I think last time we recorded one of these was when we talked about your injury. I think it was like yeah. right after you got hurt. How are you feeling, man? Still not on good. the injured side. Yeah. Still a little bit out of commission, but hopefully that in sucks. a few days I'll be able to stand long enough to do a little something something. That's what you said last week too though. Are you do you it feel is. like you're feeling better or do you feel like every time you exert it is yourself, getting it better. Gets worse? I That's just good. got some like a orthotics shit ton for of my Xanax. shoes. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> feeling great. You said you got what? Something for your shoes? Yeah, some inserts that are helping a little bit. But yeah, the the bone is is gonna hopefully be in the right place. Oh no, that but, sounds awful. Yeah, you always so, want your bone to be in the right place. I don't know if we've talked about it on mm-hmm. on this show before, but I'm a pretty frequent visitor of the chiropractor. Or I don't even know if we've talked a lot about how you're a professional ballroom dancer, a very athletic job and a very constant on your feet job all the time. And you've injured yourself and you can't be on your feet, which is a big deal. Yeah, when you're so it makes an it athlete, kind of hard you do. can't perform. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I go to the chiropractor pretty frequently just because, like, this is a job, like you said, has a lot of wear and tear on your body. And I'm already a little creaked up anyway. So, what does that mean? Extra, you know, a little creak in here and there. Okay. And so I get like dry needled a lot, which is a type of acupuncture mm. where basically, long story short, you make the muscle spasm so it relaxes using needles. And god damn, they did that to my feet a couple times the last couple weeks, and it is the worst pain I have felt. It's terrible. It helps kind of, but they stick a needle in and like make the muscle jump. And then once they realize they're in the right spot, they hook it up to this electric machine that like makes your foot get shocked and like jolts the muscles. That sounds awful. 
It's interesting. Well, let's sidestep from the feet talk. Before we get into the episode. To some knee talk. All right. What do you think about the caps, the little elbow part of it? What do you think about the knees, Zach? You you, you, you a top knee or bottom knee type of guy? you're going to be out there in public, you should cover them up is all. Cover them up. Cover up your knees. I like no it. one wants to see those. Uh, I wanted to talk about, have you ever done any type of gardening or or taking care of a plant? Do you have any bit of a green thumb or is it like I wouldn't say I have a green thumb, but I've done it. it. Yeah, I currently have two plants I'm trying to save that were dying when I moved in. Um, okay. I threw out all the other ones. I've never even tried. Two. You know, because I've always been a child. I'm just recently yeah. like, I'm an adult for real, for real. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should start learning how to take care of other living things. It's kind of a nice feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine it, it goes a, right. A nice you know what? To the I had a parsley plant okay. at two living places ago. You know, this okay. is the third place I've lived since we started this podcast. I think I did. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. But I had a parsley plant long well, ago. Well, not since the Cowboy the Bebop podcast. We've only done like eight of these. Oh, oh that's fair. That's Since fair. we started podcasting. Podcasting. Yeah. But I, I took care of a parsley plant really well until I moved. And then what happened? You just let it die? Yeah. <laughs> It was slightly further away from me. <laughs> oh, sure. Because it was outside. Well, let's talk about today's session of Cowboy Bebop. We're talking hey, about yo. session eight of the show, <laughs> Waltz for <laughs> Venus. The episode was storyboarded by Yoshiyuki Takai. It was directed by Yoshiyuki Takai. I think that's the first time it's been a double header on that. Mm-hmm. And it was written by Mishiko Yokote. I'm pretty sure that's the creator or, mm-hmm. or whatever of the show. So... Some heavy handers on this episode. Some of the big names of the series come together for this one. In Japan, it originally aired on April 24th, 1998. And in the U.S., it originally aired on December 24th, 2001. At some point, I want to map out the Japanese air order versus the U.S. US. air order. Because Mm. we've been watching the U.S. dubs, but we've been watching it in like the production order, which I assume is the Japanese air order. Whereas the U.S. uh, uh, moves some episodes around. I think it's interesting for this episode because we've made kind of jokes about some of the other episodes aired pretty close to 9-11. And this episode begins with a scene that very much resembles uh, an airplane being hijacked. Yeah, So I am wondering if this was pushed back to December for a reason. Even I could though I see think that last happening. week's episode was September or something. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, and I'd like to see where the air order is different and how we would think that would like hurt or Change, help the yeah. series or if it really changes anything. Yeah, it's, it's interesting been quite episodic so far. Mm-hmm. And it tends to be. I think there's a few episodes that follow off of each other like mm-hmm. in the grand, like larger story. Sure. But those are so spread out. That you can as long mix as and they're the in the inside. right order, and the other ones like keep in mind what characters are supposed to be around or not supposed to be around. Totally, we'll have to do that at some point. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah. Okay, so let's do some trivia. Did you write down any trivia questions for this? I episode? do. I have three questions for you today. I have today. three as well. I'll go first. Uh, what does Spike take, thinking that it's popper pills to help with his voice? Ah, it's a, th- it's a, th- uh, the throat lozenge. Yes. Yeah, cough drop. Yes. What does Faye say about casinos? What is she says that they're more. It's more fun than spending your. It says it's more fun to spend your money there than to spend at the bank. Yeah, more not, fun than a bank. For? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. What are the names of the bounty Spike collects in the beginning? Rebel and Kebel. Huey, Louie, and Dewey. Damn it. Nice. I thought that was funny. A little yeah, uh, Ducktales reference. Ducktales. Great song. What are the plants that cure Venus sickness called? Gray ash. Yeah, I would have accepted Venus Ash as well. I think nice. that's what they've called it. Uh, and what does Spike take a bite of at the end of the episode? An apple. Yes. Yeah. He takes you a bite out of crime, Did Zach. I get all of your questions right and you missed one of mine? Um, I have one more for you. Okay, okay, sure. How much are the Venus Ash seeds worth a piece? Oh, damn it. I, I, I blew my wad too early because I don't you know the did. I want to say at some point they said the plant was worth like $10 million, or am I wrong on that? You're correct. The plant's worth around two. I don't know the seeds, though. Would they be a piece? You would think they would be worth a similar amount as a plant. Is it? Because the plant's already grown. I guess that's true. So I'm going to say 20 million. A piece? Yes. No. They How are 8 is- million a piece. Oh, so it's cheaper to get the seeds. Sure. Yeah. Okay, whatever. You have to grow it. Yeah, I didn't know that one. Fine. Sue me. <laughs> we both got two of three. Yeah, we did okay. Yeah, those are my questions. I think what's next is uh, it's one of my favorite parts of of this is is getting to find out something zach uh, how are you feeling i don't know i haven't been doing very well on these and i don't think i'm very good at doing this and that's okay 
I think I'm good at podcasting because I have a lot of thoughts about things, and I, I, I have trouble putting, like, my my points succinctly, and I think that's fine for podcasting, but hard for this segment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do feel like I followed this episode pretty well. Okay, so that's good. we'll see. Other than when you asked me what the the seeds were when they that were That was more of not quite understanding the animation. I didn't see it as a bag of seeds. I saw it as like a little glass slide with like something to be Where the fuck do you keep your seeds, Zach? Oh, you know. You keep them in a bag? Well where I keep my Not seed, a little triangle? Baby. They're Come in on. my balls. My seed is in my balls. <laughs> right next to the P. Um, well, for those who, who are <laughs> unaware, we're about to find out. Did Zach comprehend the episode this week yep all right zach (laughs) 20 seconds on the clock yeah okay uh are you ready sure all right three we're gonna go on go like always okay three two one go 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 on a flight to Venus, uh, Spike is on a ship that is taken over and shot up, which puts him in contact with a man named Rocco, who he is very annoyed by as he wants to learn a bunch of information from him. But then because of him, he gets put in charge of a very important plan on Venus that can cure a disease that you get if you're there and you don't have this plant. And he is to take care of it, Stop. but he doesn't know. Damn, I didn't get to the moral quandary of it all. You didn't. I, the I actually, goes so fast. So something you did well, you started out and I thought you were going to spend too much time on the bounties at the beginning you didn't mention they were bounties but you did nicely segue from that onto Rocco. thank you who i always thought that man's name was was rocco that's what i always call him when i <laughs> have you seen before. the elmo rocco memes fuck yeah i love it rocco, and it's funny because like i always thought rock. the elmo rocco beef was funny like when rocco was introduced it that's just funny. hilarious it's great sesame street cast i'm down there's gotta be only what like there's a billion billion episodes episodes. there's been one every day for 40 years i I mean i kind of want to do a saturday night live podcast of my own at some point sesame street would be similar i'm sure but i'll do sesame street uh, spread your cheeks shit all over me come on yeah uh c minus yeah that's fine see i i i have planned out the whole episode not planned out but i know Mm -hmm. the whole episode decently well it's just I'm not doing a good job of getting there in the 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to work on it. We'll see if by the well, end Well, a scholar time, such as yourself, Zachary, must yeah. use the right linguistics when conveying your thoughts and feelings. So I'll just go out and say it. I think now maybe I'd ha- we watched these a little spaced out, so maybe I'd have to rewatch some of the early mm-hmm. ones. I think this is my favorite episode so far. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it tells a really interesting story. I think it's the most I've cared about. I don't know. It feels like, even though it's a small, like, one episode storyline, it feels like Spike has a moral decision to make that feels like it matters in this situation. Yeah. You know, he could take in Roko as a bounty and get money. He could sell the plant or the seeds right away and get money, but he kind of falls in love a little bit with the annoying Roko and his really sweet sister who sees something in him that he doesn't quite see in himself anymore. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the episode could have gone down any of those roads and have been satisfying, but it's even more satisfying that he makes the right choice and then bad things happen anyway. Roko is shot and yeah. doesn't survive. The blind sister gets to see again, but never gets to see her brother's face and all mm-hmm. that. And there's kind of this whole, I don't know if this is the point or not, but oftentimes bad decisions might lead to better short-term outcomes, such as having a shit ton of money. Whereas now Spike's probably going to be sitting on this for a while. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I think it's a really interesting episode that does a lot. Very yeah. Well. I really like this. episode. I mean, it's, it's one of my favorites in the show. And I think it's my favorite one so far. Even more so than the Ballad of Fallen Angels, because I love that one too. Sure. But I think this episode really lets us see a little bit more into the world that we're in, which I like, but also get to see how Spike, you know, the whole idea of be water, I want to talk about that for a second. So I don't know if you know that, but that's a Bruce Lee quote. No, I don't, but I could see that. And so that's where that whole idea comes from. And I think that that whole thought of being water, being adaptable, being Mm -hmm. calm, but also powerful is it's what Spike's about. I think that to me is Spike Spiegel. Mm-hmm. You know, he is adaptable. He's been a, a mafia guy. He's a bounty hunter. He's like a womanizing gallivant in his life at times. You know, he's all these different things, but he's still himself. But that's mm-hmm. he adapts to whatever circumstance he's in. He doesn't harp on things too long. And there are good and bad things about that. But it makes him who he is. And I think that that idea and him seeing somebody want to emulate that 
hmm. and trying to do good. I think Spike is a lot of times shows that he, you know, ha- is good of heart. He's not evil. And this kid is, is breaking the law, but he also has a blind sister at home and he's trying to get her a cure so that she can see. Which is know, very and- interesting because that to draw parallels to the real world of mm-hmm. the way we look at criminals, quote yeah. unquote, and like. Uh, I mean, there are people doing bad things, but n- nobody sets out to do a bad thing. Yeah. And, and it's never as cut and dry as person did this thing. There's always a story to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I do like that we see that, that we empathize with these people way more than we would the people that are trying to arrest them or whatever. Yeah. I also really, this I mean, this show is not a super lighthearted show, but it's not super dark and heavy all the time. It's, it's gotten there a funny. couple times. But this episode, we see, like, Roko's getting, like, a cigar put out on his yeah. face. Like, it's it's rough. I mean, it shows that sometimes life is pretty grimy. I want to talk about the world that we're in for a little bit, Zach. About Venus? Yes. So this is cool. I love the way they build this universe with, at this point, planetary travel's happening. Mm-hmm. The science is there, so we can do that. So they're the on Venus. They have these plants that are in the atmosphere that are helping them breathe and survive because Venus is covered in poisonous rain and clouds and things so that's like how they're really interesting angle to take and they play and i love that the solution that keeps them alive to a small percentage of people is deadly and so there's like this whole thing where there's disparagement where if you're sick you're kind of fucked unless you have a ton of money you know which is real world but (laughs) i like that building element of it i did want to point out because i don't think we've talked about this that the characters for the most part are supposed to have specific ethnicities which is why kind of the whole bruce lee parallel to spike doesn't exactly work, but it's 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 that kind of idea of <laughs> well, like the it does martial in arts. the live action one. Yeah, it does. Because Spike is supposed to be like a, a like little dude. bit older Japanese guy. Okay. Faye is Singaporean. Okay. Jet is voiced by a black man in the dub, played by a black man in the live action. He's his But he's not a he's, he's not kind black. of gray. Yeah. Colored, so he's something, but Jet's black. And for right. Ed, who we haven't met yet, Ed's like kind of copper skinned pretty ambiguous in a lot of ways but uh their last name is wong so chinese i guess wow very sumptuous of you i know maybe they married into it <laughs> well ed's like never mind yeah but you're talking about i know that ed is like i mean whether or not they were trying to purposefully have a non-binary character they very much i think ed is a non-binary icon sure i could see it being intentional i don't think well, that whether this or not team did the a lot thought of, of non-binary people was that intentional at the time yeah. or if it was more of just the gender gender ambiguity. fluidity mm-hmm. yeah and i think that's cool i'm excited for that yeah we get to meet ed next episode i'm surprised that it's episode nine that we meet them yeah okay so what do you want to talk about about this one let's talk about the mafia a little bit i thought the mafia was really interesting a pretty yeah. stereotypical head of the mafia guy but you're really rooting for Rocco in this. Uh, he's so sweet and kind and, and caring, and he almost makes it out, and he doesn't. Mm-hmm. And, and the mafia feels like a real threat. Uh, the gun violence in this episode, I, I thought it felt really threatening. Other yeah. than like some of the times when like Spike should have definitely gotten shot the hell up. But oh, that's not yeah. a problem of this show. That's just well, he's water, gun Zach. violence in media. He is water. You can't shoot water. You can't shoot water. I think that this episode really does a cool job of portraying a different kind of mob. Because like, we've seen the syndicate, which is a super organized, big operation, lots of power, mm-hmm. scary, dark. Sure. And here we have this like normal, like small time criminal that hit it big with a, with a. So now he's feeling power. His men, his like underlings, are just regular people. Like they're mm-hmm. not some like organized, trained criminals. This is a, a kid who is just running with the wrong crowd and trying to come up with a cure for his sister and is like stealing. I mean, he's benefiting from this kind of giant score too, but you can tell he's not like a lifetime hardened criminal. He's no. a, a ne'er-do-well little scamp who's trying to, <laughs> you know, do the right thing, you know? And it's, it's tough because we have an image, even in the show of, okay, the bounty hunters are the good guys, even though they're not necessarily like heroes. They're kind of between the laws, yeah. but we still, kind of like in a Han Solo way. Yeah, but the the people that we see that are the criminals, that are the gangsters, are always portrayed as, as bad guys in the show so far. There haven't been any that we are like supposed to sympathize with, really. But now we are in that situation where this is somebody who there's a bounty on them, but they don't deserve to die. They're not... They shouldn't be, you know, punished because they're trying to do the right thing, even if they did break the law. So I think it it presents an interesting look at 
good guy, bad guy sure. dynamics. The, and... There can be bad guy bounty hunters, but the good mm-hmm. guys aren't above being proven that they should help someone. Yeah. And it's really nice to see that side of Spike. I think this, even more than the backstory stuff we've seen from him, this is the most that I felt like, yeah, Spike's like a real guy, mm-hmm. and he's like he's got these moral decisions to make, and you wouldn't really be mad at him if he got the money, because they always yeah. need money. It's always tight for them. One small detail, a little bit different from that, a world-building thing. I really liked seeing the device in the beginning when Spike is giving Faye her share of Oh, the yeah, money like transfers the, the credits or whatever. And it's like this wallet book-shaped thing. They both put their credit card-looking things in. And I just thought that was an interesting yeah, that's world-building really cool. thing. Which also, like it's our first time seeing them successfully complete a bounty. Mm, that's true. And it's good to see, because like, Ayn's going to get some good food. From yeah. Us. Almost no jet in this episode. No, but Jet does come out into the fight for the first time in a couple episodes. I guess the that's episode true. after next, I think, is the super duper Jet episode. So you've mentioned the waltz that's not in the episode, but that mm-hmm. it's kind of inspired by. Are there any musical beats in this episode? Yeah, that you particularly no or that, that stand out. First to you? kind of jazz break that they go into. Um, uh-huh. I think it's the fight, not on the plane. It's like the first big fight scene after the plane. I think. And that one's really cool. I love that. Like, I love an action sequence with jazz behind it. I think it it makes the pace seem quicker. It makes it seem like there's things happening. Every time there's a percussion hit, there's like a gunshot that goes off. And I think that's really cool. Was this music, uh, this is probably a stupid question. Mm -hmm. Was it like the animated stuff was kind of put together first and they made some of the music specific to the movements of the show? Yes. Because that's incredible. And Mm -hmm. uh, obviously... All film score kind of does that. Yeah. But the way that jazz can move unexpectedly and arrhythmically, mm-hmm. it really lends itself to a fight, which would also move sporadically and arrhythmically. Yeah. Uh, I, I do really like that, too. So what are the, what are the songs? Are I, the songs? Um, I also really like the Music Box song. I think it's a beautiful scene when the they have at the end. A couple times. Yeah, when they have that song playing with the ashes falling down, mm-hmm. and it's kind of is showing, like, okay, well, this thing, like brings life to this planet but it also like takes it away yeah and even when somebody does get their life like saved and is going to be healed by this plant it still resulted in someone else dying all over this you know this plant these things that are falling from the sky so i think it's really it was a a beautifully drawn there's a shot i think i even said to you um we were watching it that there's a shot where spike is sitting next to the hospital bed at the end when she gets Mm -hmm. her or when she's about to get her sight back and the shot of him is so broad and it's so like foreboding and powerful spike's a big guy really broad shoulder and the suit has super like pointy shoulders too which make him look Mm. bigger but you have that juxtaposed with the the like warmness in his expression in his face there's a moment where she like reaches out and touches his face to like feel him and i feel like she gets a sense for who spike is with that because she can see okay and also that's the confirmation that are you talking about towards the end of the episode yeah that's also the confirmation that she needs that Roko's died mm-hmm. because he's not going to say it and that yeah. vibe's kind of in the room, but feeling his face, she can mm-hmm. feel that something bad has happened. Yeah. And yeah. Even Spike, who is very stoic, I feel like she was really able to read that, which uh, is very mm-hmm. common in blind people. I thought they really perceived that well in this episode. Yeah, they did. Being blind and she wants her sight back but it's not that like being blind hasn't had Mm -hmm. its uh, upsides to her as well i find that very interesting yeah i one thing that always stuck with me this episode is when at one of the last lines that they have together is where he's like he was a good guy like that's what kind of guy he was he was a good guy just the way you remember him and like just the way you always saw him Mm -hmm. as and i like that because one you didn't need to have seen him yeah to know because yeah, you know him more than anybody did by the time you spent together. Like it's you like kind the... of feel him if you can't see him. Mm-hmm. Wreck It Ralph is a great movie. The second one is also really <laughs> yeah. good. But the there's that line. Is, the second one is terrible. <laughs> the second, the first Wreck It Ralph movie is great. The is second it? one is dog shit. It's not dog shit. I, I, I it is. <laughs> I fucking hate Wreck It Ralph too. I've only seen Wreck It Ralph at two. Wreck It Ralph two once, and it was in the theater when it first came out. So maybe I, I... really hate the climax of that movie that's fair and i also hate that disney first of all the whole movie's like a commercial for other disney stuff and that's lame and also 
animated movies take a long ass time to make so the day that they decide they're making a movie about the internet everything's outdated already let yeah. alone 10 years later when people see it and they have no idea what flossing is or whatever they you know what sure. i mean that movie sucks well in wreck it ralph one zangi from street fighter says huh. just because you're a bad guy does not mean, mean you're a bad, bad guy, guy. And I think I love that. And I think that's here. I mean, just because he was breaking the law, he loved his sister and wanted the best for her. And at the end, because of those seeds that he sent her, probably knowing that he wasn't in a good situation and that people were going to mm -hmm. get him at some point, he knew that she'd be okay. Well said. Uh, in our last few minutes, is there anything in this episode that we need to remember moving forward past it just being a standalone story? Is there anything revealed or little seeds planted? You know what? That we I want to give a mind? shout out to, and this person is not was almost who I made my captain because I okay it, my favorite in this episode changes all the time but this time sure. I really fucking loved Faye she was a badass she like pow 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 she Let's shot like 18 dudes about Faye. We guns barely out of their her. hands she's kind of on the sidelines what do yeah. you like about her yeah I think episode? Faye has a great episode she's actively involved you know she like ran off to the casino to do her thing which she saves always does saves the day a couple of times she yeah. kind of saves Spike in the beginning and then she saves them in the end in her ship as well and when the guy like tells her that there's gonna be this meetup going on, when she finally gets it out of the old guy at the bar, she calls Jets like, "Hey, like this shit's gonna go down. I need yeah. your backup." Which tells you there is some camaraderie, regardless of how she's no longer just hitching a ride. She's like in now. Yeah, and I love I love getting to see the three of them like in an action scene together. Even though Jet hmm. was kind of still off to the side a little more than the others. I think that Faye was a real badass this episode. I love this episode for her. She doesn't have a lot of emotional weight in this story, but I think that the way, like, there's a really cool, like, after she shoots the guns out of everyone's hand, there's a cool mm -hmm. shot of her, like, with her, like, glasses and shit, with, like, the gun smoking, and it looks real badass. That whole bar scene with, like, the red lighting the whole time, cool. Really cool. It is really cool, but honestly, I was so focused on the A story that I didn't, the, yeah. the Faye stuff went by pretty fast for me. She but is. she is. Usually she's a little more whiny and annoying. And in mm -hmm. this time, she, which well, she can be sometimes, and that's fine. But in this yeah. one, she's more than that. Yeah. Anything else that we need to remember to move forward or anything else before we wrap up? From we this get Ed next we week, Zach. Yeah, but we're, we're not, we're, we're this week now. Oh. This is a great episode. Do you have yeah. any last thoughts on what you like about it? If you're unsure, like if for some reason you're watching this but haven't watched cowboy bebop this is an nobody's episode watching you should this. absolutely nobody's watching it so <laughs> you should this. absolutely listen to this episode of cowboy bebop it's great <laughs> <laughs> or if you're somebody who likes this show and wants to show somebody an episode to get into it it's a decent this is a pretty episode. good one yeah sure because it shows that the show can like have weight and stuff but it also doesn't like you don't have to necessarily live in this world i don't think you have to be living in the world to get most of the episodes of the show sure but this one, you can definitely come in from outside and recognize that it's really cool. So moving forward, where does this rank in general as your favorite episodes? How high does it get on the list? You say they're all one of your favorites. This one is definitely... Top 10, top 5? Top 5. Wow. This, at times, is my favorite episode of the show. I will this say is, that. I've been in for a while now, but this episode is the first one that, like... I wasn't scratching my head at all. I was along for the ride, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's funny because, like, scrolling through all 26 episodes, I'm, like, trying to be like, okay, I like it more. I'm like, oh, well, that one, oh, well, that, oh. <laughs> That's the but, way yeah, this one's a top five episode for me consistently. All right, and who is your captain of the Bebop this week? You know what? Faye gets an honorable mention. It's a great you, Spike You kind of want to give it to her, even though it's I do. I have episode. Faye written down here. Yeah. That's who I gave it to uh, yeah. after we finished watching. But I have a hard time not giving it to Roko. I yeah. think that he really is a great character. And it's it's a shame that we get these awesome characters that we get a little bit invested with. And, you know, they they die or they're gone. We never see them mm. again. Whereas, like, I mean, Faye started as kind of a Roko character. She popped in and she, you know, very clearly was a little bit more than that when she came in. In another world, Roko could have joined the team yeah. just like anybody else did. And Ben Spike's mentee and his, his yeah. Padawan. Yeah, it, I th it's Roko for me too. I really think that character is perfect for the tragedy that this episode mm -hmm. wants to tell where you instantly like him. There's that great, like, Spike acts like he hates him, but you know yeah. that... He's also amused by the by the tenacity of, mm -hmm. of Roko. And then when he dies, it's both expected and yeah. incredibly sad. And yeah, he, it's a great character. It's it, it's his episode. And the, really. and the line is a little on the nose, but it doesn't make it any less good. When he's like, you know, do you think like if I'd met you earlier, like 
in oh, my sure. life who would have been friends. And it makes you think like, yeah, it's if hard he had say, had somebody like But it's also like that hard around. to say with the type of person Spike is. Well, sure. Like, <laughs> well, no, but I almost mean that in a in a more positive way that I think Roko was the type of person that Spike needed to interact with mm-hmm. now to be able to make a different moral decision. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if the Spike that we've seen all the time, I would expect to be like, no, I'm not going to go after this bounty. Sure. I feel like it sucks for Roko, but I feel like mm-hmm. their their connection was right when it needed to be. Yeah. Well, that's it. That was a great episode. I love doing these with me uh, too, what? buddy. My my brain. I love doing these with you, buddy. It's a fun, different shade of podcasting to scratch, and you've got a lot of really cool, nifty stuff to say about these these little cartoons I keep hearing about. So it's it's nice to finally hear some of them and understand what you're talking about. You know, in between, just totally like mashing it out. Sure. To the, to sure. the 2D, it's just know. a paste by now. Yeah, it's I I do get get a little bit of the <laughs> insight. I, I get that post nut clarity so often when watching all anime. the time because you're always in a state yeah. of just having nutted. Exactly. Well, with that, we're gonna sign <laughs> off with Brookback Bebop for the week. We'll be back next week. What's the next episode? Jamming. Jamming with Edward. With Edward. I've heard so much about and you know it's always tough. When you go into a piece of media mm-hmm. knowing that you're supposed to really like a certain aspect yeah. of it, it almost you could call it the minions conundrum. Sure, if you will. it's it almost makes me like want to say, well, fuck this thing that everybody likes. Well, here's but I what, what I'll like say: it. I want to like them a lot. Is I think that the only real point of divisiveness in the anime community with this show that makes some people not like it is some people do not like Edward. I love Ed. Okay. We'll and see I know that Lil loves week, Ed. I suppose. Sure. Mm-hmm. I've I hope got a little it. Ed. Let's see. This is just for you, Zachy. If you yeah, point a figurine it. or a poster or something. I have a little Ed up on the corner. Now, you told me that some there. of your other anime figures come with the underwear. Does does Ed come with the underwear? The Ed does not have undies. Oh, there's I can't really see, but I believe you. There's Ed and then I'm in the middle. You have to pull it out next week. I will. I will bring Ed and Ing with me for next week. All right, well, this has been fun. We'll be back uh, back in the ship. Back, Last night, back to Spock, the shack. Kirk and, back to the and, dun, 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 dun. and Obi-Wan all here from the Cowboy Bebop gang. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. We'll see you next time. <laughs> the boy who lives come to die. Okay. <laughs> Dabba Kadabra. <laughs> listening 
Support this show and our podcast network at patreon.com slash can't disappoint podcast, where starting at $5 a month, you can get immediate access to all 40 outrageous sessions of Broke Back Bebop. See you next time, Space Cowboy. Let's go!